Hello. Hi, Calgary Comic Expo. How are you? My name is Nick Taylor. I'm the nerd and culture writer at CalgaryIsAwesome.com. So if you uh, come to our little website on Monday, I'll probably have a nice write-up with a whole ton of pictures of the weekend. But uh, enough about me. Let's just get right to it, shall we? Uh, you know our two guests tonight from one of the longest-running science fiction television shows of all time. Ladies and gentlemen, a big Calgary welcome for Michael Shanks and Richard Dean Anderson. I know, they're going to make you talk. Make him talk. This will be good. Oh, look at this. No, you have to pick it up. Don't sit on it. Children here? <laughs> Hello, children. Gentlemen, welcome to Calgary. What's that? Welcome to Calgary. Not so close to the mic. I can't understand what you're saying. Welcome to Calgary. Thank you. You're Very welcome. Very nice. You much prefer it like this than like this, right? <laughs> I, guess that's a, I guess that's a yes. Right. I just don't, I just don't know my own power sometimes. Uh, so how's the, how's the expo treating you so far? I just got here, it's great! <laughs> Why are we so far back here? Do you want to move forward? I do. These poor guys that set the lights are cursing me. I think the video guys just got really mad at us for moving the cues, but... Well, the lighting guy is just cursing the day I was born. So is my mother, but that's another time. I'm good, thank you. Thank you, though. Canada Dry. <laughs> so, guys, do you want to talk about uh, maybe Stargate? That little thing you did for the better part of two decades? I yeah, don't, I don't, I don't talk remember about anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, let's talk about that stuff. Let's do that. We could talk about a lot of stuff. We could talk about the economy and, you know. What economy? What an, yeah, exactly. You know, asking us to just, you know, free speech, free talk at, about well, our old series. Is I did have some specific questions. Okay, but. let's do that. Don't interrupt me while I'm talking. <laughs> totally kidding. Take it away, Nick. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to know, how would you guys describe your relationship on the show, your characters? Kind of gay. Kind of, a little bit gay. Were you happy that the show ended before the term bromance became really popular? No, we were just kind of gay. I mean, we were, it wasn't really like a... Yeah. So, no denial. We're um, so, so confident in our masculinity that we're unafraid of the term happy or gay. You gotta be careful here. There's a fine line where it starts becoming serious. <laughs> He's got three kids, I got one. You do the math. Oh, about the show? Yeah. It was fun. We had fun teasing the teasing everybody, I think. It was like we didn't start anything. It was just our general behavior when the the mix of our two personalities together on camera was quite flitty and fun. And um, people interpreted that as something more. Unfortunately, Michael didn't. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> well, I think 
think there's a ton of people who want to ask some questions tonight. So I think we should start into the crowd, a little Q&A. Who's first? Uh, there's a lot of sarcastic jokes that Colonel O'Neill puts out. I want to know if that's what a lot of it was scripted or if it was on the spot thinking. Did Richard Dean and Anderson ever improvise? Am I naturally sarcastic? <laughs> Let me say something really sarcastic. Nice to meet you. <laughs> that was so mean. But I don't care. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I really do care. I do. I do, really. Does that, does that answer at all your question? What was the question? I don't... Yeah. I if you ever read a script <laughs> on the show, I think something like that. Stay close. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I'm a pretty much of a snotty-nosed brat in real life. And poor, the poor writers, I think they finally just said, okay, as long as it fits. But um, it was fun, especially when everybody got into it. It was kind of not real productive, but it was fun. Over here. Hi guys. Um, well, first of all, I wanted to point out that I'm wearing the shirt that I wear on days when um, my papers are due, and it says I can't do my homework. Sam and Jack aren't canon yet. Or what? That's a uh, slash fiction reference. A what? That uh, you and uh, Samantha Carter never hooked up in the show. Are you sure? <laughs> well, not on a long-term alternate reality basis, but... Uh, you watch the show. I do. So never yeah. officially, but um, I wanted to ask, there's of course videos of YouTube uh, of some great things that have happened on set, including when ATAPS did the whole stuck on a glacier with MacGyver thing. And I was wondering if you guys have stories of like your favorite pranks that were pulled on you or that you pulled on others. Did you just call Amanda eight taps? <laughs> I'm from the internet. Eight tap roo. Hey, baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's far out. I guess. What would that make you? I'm trying to figure it out. Rick, Rick, Rick Dunans. Well, my name backwards is Nasredna. That's Anderson backwards. Look it up. <laughs> Try and keep up, folks. Because <laughs> <laughs> I can't. <laughs> we gotta bust it down. Oh, sorry, what was that question again? S just say you it know, again, ATAPS. Um, yeah, ATAPS, when it. she was on the show, uh, did the whole stuck on a glacier with MacGyver prank, and I was wondering about you guys. Did you have favorite yes. pranks that you guys pulled on others or that were pulled on you? Eh, not really, no. You know, I don't, I don't believe, I don't know what happened after I left, but we... Nothing. We're, yeah, we're Nothing not... Nothing happened we're, after you <laughs> left. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, it's a Ben Browder joke. Um, I don't fancy myself anyway, and I didn't see any formal prankstering. It's, it was all just kind of a light attitude about work and life and things like that and you know it's if, if you can't laugh or s you know smile or be comfortable at work it's not worth it so I <laughs> just all the unemployed it's like, people. <laughs> it's like it's like you just made bogey or something like that and I was like, yay way to go a taps huh Remember that. Uh, Thanks for your question. <laughs> I think we'll go uh, up to the left here. And just to warn everybody, right, before we really get carried away, there's about a 75 to 25 percent chance your question will actually get answered when we speak after it's done. Just <laughs> warning you, okay? Hi, I'm really excited to see you guys. 
Um, one of my favorite parts about Stargate is how every planet looks like Vancouver. Um, so I was wondering, what is your favorite part about filming in Canada? Gas town. Close to my house. <laughs> Well, when I first moved to Can or Vancouver, um, Joe Forty's was my favorite place because I used to drink, and um, used to, yes, used to. Well, he'll vouch for that. Uh, he didn't drink at all when he was on the show. He and Chris, thank God. <laughs> he and Chris would just they they were so pissed off at me when we all met, and these guys were the young, virile, you know, guys with sane livers and everything and I wouldn't go out drinking with them because I don't drink and they were just pissed I said oh come on we've heard so much about you your he, rank man yeah he, when he was when he was doing MacGyver I think he kind of <laughs> did the whole town <laughs> I'm, so legend says another TV series cancelled by UPN thank um, you thank you <laughs> thank you <laughs> So by the time he got to us, he was uh, he was quite the uh, you know Burn sober up. saint. Yeah, that's, that's another way. I was trying to pep it up. No, I was no. trying to give it some yeah. Um, what was the question? Yeah, what was the question again? What was your favorite part about filming in Canada? Not not the rain in Vancouver. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm from here, so I that was a good. Uh, that, I would say that would be the best part of it for me is that that's how I got the job for starters and. Uh, after that, it uh, was close to my family and everything, and I, 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 I love my country, and I, I love Vancouver when it's not raining. Me too. <laughs> well, he's from Minnesota, so it's kind of a Canadian province anyway, right? So I'm an honorary Canadian. Thank you. Further to that question, Michael, your wife, Lex, is on uh, Continuum right now, and like most great Canadian shot produced science fiction shows, this one's actually set in Vancouver for a change. Is it kind of nice to see Vancouver getting its due after being the backdrop for so long? Yeah, it's really great. I mean, it's the great thing about her show is it's not, you know, it's nice that it's set in Vancouver. That's a really cool aspect of it. It doesn't apologize for that fact. It's, it's great storytelling that's kind of globally done. I, I loved, I don't know if you guys are watching it on Continuum, you're watching it on TV. Just something that's really cool about, you know, in the first episode this season, the, the last week, that they um, showed that, that time lag sh CGI shot at the end where it shows all the water coming in and this is how the future takes place over the, and you see the buildings getting built up. When you're from Vancouver, that's really cool. You get to see somebody's interpretation of how the city's going to change over the next, you know, few hundred years. And I thought that was very cool. So it's, it is nice to, to have a show shot in Vancouver that uh, is set there. Awesome. Yeah, it's, they actually shoot it in Toronto, however. It's the only problem. <laughs> but they shoot it for Vancouver. We'll go to a question. Hi. Sorry, I'm a little nervous. Thank you so much for coming and taking time out of your schedules. Uh, my question is, what was the best experience that you had? Not necessarily anything that was funny, but something that affected you, that you took away from it. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> um, well, we can, well, I'll speak for myself, but I had a baby in Vancouver, so that was, I, yes, obviously I didn't have a baby myself, but I, had, uh, uh, I was a partner in having a kid, who I still have to this day. <laughs> and so did you. It's not the same one. Yeah. It was different, different, different We one. do like to recycle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we don't? Our, our daughters are actually eight days apart. And what was really funny is that, you know, we, we, we had them in the second season of the show. And now we haven't seen each other in what, four, four years or something? We have three years, something like that. And um, we can now, you know, conciliate with each other over the fact that they're now teenagers. They're now both 14 and just a pain in the ass. All you 14 year old girls out there, relax. Just a little bit. 
It's all going to be okay. It gets better. Yes. You get used to it. Go to you. Puberty, you dopes. <laughs> Jesus God. I, that's what I meant. I didn't even know what they I were saying, thinking about I, the I first time. I know. What were you laughing at? What were you? Oh, he said. Oh, I saw that thing with that. Oh. He said you'll get rid yeah, of it. Yeah, it was you'll dirty, whatever it was, wasn't it? You'll get used to it. What? What was the question? We have another question. Hi. Um, I don't know if you guys were aware, but the last panel that was in here was Supernatural. And so we've seen Michael Shanks and Amanda Tapping on Supernatural. Any chance, Richard Dean Anderson, that you would be on Supernatural soon? It's a, it's a TV show. Yeah, you get, you got to be really specific with him. When, we're, when you t <laughs> I'll translate. I'm, I'm sorry. I thought that you kept up with your co-worker's work. Well, you thought wrong. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I... He had it, to check my ID when I first came in this morning, so... Um, took a little blood. Yeah. Super, Supernatural is a show on the CW that's about two brothers who fight demons and other, you know, supernatural forces and whatnot, and, and Amanda's got a recurring role on it right now. I played some dude in an episode fighting some demons and stuff. Um, I don't know if it's right up your alley, but... Um, uh, yeah. I don't think so. It's for the CW. Rick's not really into that demographic anymore. <laughs> your, your, your daughter is, but... No, it's true. I've got the same one and the same... No, not the same daughter. Uh, and my daughter's now into... Like, I'm working with Daniel Gillies, who's on The Vampire Diaries, right? And the spin-off The Originals. As, you know, she met him last year, and she couldn't have cared less. This year, she got into the Vampire Diaries. She goes, you're working with that guy from the Vampire Diaries? I'm like, yeah, I, I, I introduced you. You met him. Yeah, but it's so cool. Not really. <laughs> Rick will be on there next season, no problem. Let's Ch go up top. So I'm going to ask the obvious question. What was your favorite Stargate villain? Jack O'Neill. <laughs> <laughs> A bad guys. Oh, yeah. Your favorite was Hathor. I thought you said bad actors. No. <laughs> and you said Richard Dean Anderson. Or Jack O'Neill. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> we'll be right back after this work. Ask, they're asking, asking uh, who our favorite bad guys are on the show. Like, oh, name a few. Sure. Hathor. So keep going. Ball. Ball. Hathor, Ball. The two separate people. Okay. Yeah. I, I thought uh, one was an adjective or a <laughs> verb. Uh, Anubis. Okay. Uh, our first one. Um, Apophis. Apophis. Any others? That's, Anubis. That's, who? Anubis. I could, I, could, I could list off some of the lesser ones, but you don't stand a chance. No. So I'm just going to go I'm gonna go with the big ones. I don't think I stand a chance at this level. <laughs> um, do you have a, a favorite? Well, you went as Hathor. Yeah, Hathor. Hathor. Yeah. I had a good fun time with Hathor because she was such good fun. It well, was a fun. It's a morbid sense of fun that I had with her. She was such a pain in the butt. No, 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 she wasn't. She was actually quite um, stacked. <laughs> you 14-year-olds, it gets better. Okay. So sorry. I, you know, honestly, I don't remember them to know if they were the worst or not. I remember saying ball, ball a lot and making fun of, you know, the bocce and the volley and the base and the basket. And what else? Covered all the balls. Okay, thank you. Q. <laughs> Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
Let's go down here. Um, I, uh, cue ball. Just, <laughs> just having a question here. But, um, when you're doing this show, um, did you ever have that uh, kind of connection to your characters uh, where you felt that it was kind of like a little bit too real or something like that? Sorry, I don't mean to laugh at your question. I just looked over at him and went, well, they, <laughs> I don't think um, Richard ever, <laughs> ever got to, I'm just going to answer this one for you, okay? You just stay there. <laughs> I don't think Richard, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think Richard ever got too emotionally caught up in the, um, the reality of the television program to really feel that he was losing himself in his character. I think oftentimes he lost himself in his caricature, but <laughs> that was also in life. Again, I'm just oh, speaking for you. I don't think you. I've seen you since you've shot that, um, the episode with uh, Wizard of Oz. No. Have I not no, seen No, we, we saw you at the, at the uh, screening of um, Continuum on the, the oh, okay. big okay. boat. That was a great episode, by the way. It was a good <laughs> episode. So sorry, Michael. <laughs> Remember when I said it was a pretty good thing that he that he doesn't drink anymore? <laughs> Sober as a priest. You were great. Thank you very much. You were. Thank you. Really great. Yeah. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, I can't remember it either. What was it? Uh, if you guys ever got to oh, and emotionally, like, got right. like emotionally uh, caught up in your character when you felt like it wasn't really acting anymore, or was get me out of the way. Like that? No, <laughs> no. Safe. I'm too grounded. I'm sorry. Yep. Uh, and no, no, no. If you do that, I had an acting coach one time say, because I, what you're referring to is like really being in the moment, and I, I think. And I told this acting coach, I was playing, um, who's Oth Othello's uh, buddy? Iago. Iago. Why I was playing Iago, I'll never know. But, um, but I got into this, this speech and I had lost myself. Like, I was so into it that I didn't, and this is on me talking to the acting professor. I said, I was just so gone. I didn't know where I was and I was just, Iago, and I just, oh my God, and he just said, you got to watch that kind of stuff because someday you're not going to know where you are at all. Nobody's going to save you, and um, it was a serious note, actually. I don't get that deep. Michael does. He's a fine actor. He's a, f he's a studied, very fine. I saw him do Hamlet, first thing I saw him do in uh, Vancouver. And he was absolutely just good. Really, <laughs> really, really good. Oh, I mean that. <laughs> but Michael's a real actor. Come on, let's face it. Let's, <laughs> let's yeah. And I think on our show, you'll find, if you really are ob objective and you look at all the people who've been on the show, the regulars, um, Michael's the only one that really knew what he was doing as an actor. I mean, Amanda was good, but she's more of a comedian and she's got that down. Michael knows what he's doing. I'm jealous, <laughs> prick. I'm getting all teary. Um, not really. Um, no. Uh, <laughs> I was still stuck on, <laughs> my, I still hung up on my, my joke. My next joke was like, he says the first thing he saw me in in Vancouver was uh, playing Hamlet. He neglected to, to mention the fact that I'd worked with him for two years on Stargate just before that happened, so. Details. Yes. <laughs> was that true? Yes. <laughs> Fine, though. It's okay. <laughs> oh, well. You were no questions good. about the 60s either, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm closer to those than, what, where are we? I hope that answered your question. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> Let's go over here. Michael, you're from Kamloops, right? I am. 
Uh, so am I. Uh, grow up here. Um, oh, awesome! Yay! <laughs> you are not. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Uh, there's a picture of you in a high school saying one of our successes in KSS. Oh, you, you go to KSS? Or did no, you? I did not. I went to Hassan. Did you just go break into the school and look? Uh, no, my, wi <laughs> my wife went. She told me. Oh, your wife went. <laughs> okay. um, uh, my question is, have you, either of you, ever looked at a script and it's like, hey, that's a giant pothole. Why is that in there? Or what is your daily interaction with script writers, if you have any? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to take this one, or well, I'll start off. You're kind of semi-retired. You can you can probably answer this honestly. Yeah. I'll I'll start off by saying what I ended up saying to uh, all the Brad Wright, especially, and all the writers that because we had gotten rolling on the on the doing the show the first season, and even during the uh, the reading, we used to do table reads of things, and before we started uh, the pilot or the first episodes, we uh, uh, all sat around a table and read the script aloud, uh, you know, as characters and such. And I don't think there was a line went by where I didn't have some change, just, you know, some, some dopey improv. And I should have sensed at that point that I was really going down a, 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 a tough road. Um, Time passed on, things on, they were very tolerant and didn't say anything. And then finally Brad Wright got serious on me and he got red faced. If you know Brad, he can do that quite well. But he took me aside and said, you know, when you do that, you really undermine everything that we've done, everything we've put into the script, all the hard work we've done and you just, you know, you change it on the spot, on the fly. And um, I said, you're, you're right, and he was right. And I had to apologize profusely to him for that. And then I said, well, for the better though, right? <laughs> no, I didn't say that. But um, yeah, that's my end of the story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, 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 um, from those days, when, um, I mean, to be fair, I mean, when when Rick would Rick and I would go on improv rants, I, I was just trying to keep up. <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> well, most of the time, I mean, you could always. Well, you had a lot more. You were an executive producer. You had a lot more free reign to change it than I did. I wouldn't. Although I managed to pick up. It was one great habit I picked up. Absolutely, I still carry it through on on saving on saving hope. I still, uh, you know, I I go in and. Uh, change stuff for the read-throughs and, and do that. And, but at the same time, it is for the better. Everything that Rick did, as much as it sometimes hurts writers' feelings, it is always to try and improve or make it more entertaining or whatever. And I still think that, you know, the, the best idea should always win in those circumstances so long as you're not, you know, kicking anybody in the nuts, which it's not intended to. And in terms of, like, scripts, in terms of plot holes and stuff like that, yeah, you can always spot them whether or not we're actors, whether or not you should do anything about that, that's really the writer's job. If you, if you want to point them out, sure, but you're, if, if it's got nothing to do with you, you do it with taking your life in your own hands or your job in your own hands because that's their thing to worry about. So when it has something specific to do with your character, I think it should be kind of like in your wheelhouse. So My mistake at the, at, during that whole era of readjustment was that I, I was doing it publicly and like just it was just too much for Brad to take and you know he said if you've got some changes you know take me aside and we'll work on it and I said you know they're gone by the time the reads over I don't know. so anyway show respect to your writers at all times good answer thank you let's head upstairs uh, hi I just wanted to know if the two of you were to ever star in a film or a TV sitcom again together, what would you two want it to be about? About 90 minutes. <laughs> yeah, about, about 87 minutes and you can shot for about $120 million. I think that's probably about right. Sure. Yeah, sounds good. Shoot it on the cheap. <laughs> what would you want it to be, though? And it could be a sitcom. It could be a buddy sitcom.
Apparently that's funny. I know. <laughs> right, it would be a buddy sitcom. What would it be? The odd couple. The, the very odd couple. The extremely odd couple. Or <laughs> I, you know, I haven't even thought about it as much as it's a great idea. I'd love to do it that. Would, it would have to have elements of comedy in it, I, I'm pretty sure. Or attempts at comedy. Yeah. No, at least we'd try. Not always funny. As evidenced by that joke, I'll just wander over here. Let's go down here. I'm thinking about it. Hang on. <laughs> Give me a few. No, go ahead. He's already giving up. He's walking away. <laughs> He's giving up. He's like, yeah, I'm never going to get an answer out of them. Uh, the answer to your question is yes. Thank you. <laughs> Keep it short and contrite. Yeah. All right, my question would be, how were the two of you picked originally? Like, how did you get involved in Stargate SG-1 way back when? Well, my story <laughs> is um, uh, a guy by the name of John Symes, who I'd worked for during the MacGyver days over at Paramount, um, had since moved over to MGM, and Brad and who's that other guy? The Jonathan. Um, what's his last name? Lasner. Um, uh, apparently, it came up with a concept for to make it into a series. And John Symes just called me and he said, "Look, I want you to do this role." And so that was my audition. And. Um, and I, you know, I, I saw that it really did have, as proven by the 10 years that it was on the air, it was, you know, it was a no-miss. Michael's story is a little more classic, I think. Yeah, I, I just, I auditioned. <laughs> <laughs> and Rick, Rick uh, was gracious enough, he came to the, um, the screen test that we had in L.A., and he uh, read with everybody and, and kept it. Yeah, <laughs> you were there. Yeah, you did, you were there. It was a very memorable experience for him, too. Um, You're the best. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> I didn't, I, I'm not teal. You were fishing, <laughs> I can tell. I could tell. <laughs> no, I wasn't. No, I actually was told, I was actually told afterwards that I was, I was the, the second choice by most people, that they went around the room and everybody else was going, eh, the other guy, the other guy, the other guy. And, and the way Brad Wright tells the story, Brad was the one that says, no, it, Michael's the guy, guys. And so after a certain amount of convincing, I guess they decided that I was, or Brad, they, they trust Brad to make that decision. So that's, I was kind of almost not chosen for the that's part. Bullshit. It is, that's bullshit. That's, that's, that, that's what Brad told me. I'm, I'm just saying oh, what Brad he's, he's padding his resume, for God's sake. <laughs> you were so, you're the only one that was left. You're, no, mean, there was one other guy. So we had to use You don't them. even remember being there, for God's sake. I do. <laughs> I, well, I vaguely do. Um, I remember Teok, what's his name? Chris. <laughs> what? I'm old. Take it easy. Um, Chris coming on to audition, and all he did, literally, was walk onto this stage in a t-shirt, I believe. And he had just gotten done coming from the gym, spent another 20 minutes backstage pumping up and he had a couple of injections here and there. I can't prove that, but I'm trying. Anyway, all he did was walk on the stage and stand there, and he said, and we just said, next. Yeah, you, you got it. Go ahead. Get off. They literally sent everybody else home after that. There was 10 guys reading for the part. Chris went in, and they sent everybody else home. And I remember telling him, don't you work out? Don't you care? Jesus. You've all seen his body, right? <laughs> He's got two bodies. He's so I think we got time for two more questions. We'll go down here first. I'll keep it quick then. Mr. Anderson, you made the point several times of adding an L to the O'Neill character's name when you spelt it out for reporters. Was that an ad lib or was that something that was required? No, um, I didn't ad lib that. That was, I think that was written. Yeah, an actual line that was written. 
I said. <laughs> See, I can do it. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I guess they just did it to, you know, kind of an inside joke to differentiate between, you know, uh, the stark blonde flat topped Kurt Russell O'Neill and uh, my guy. O'Neill. <laughs> no, they, 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 they did it. I didn't do it. I think we have time for one more. Let's go up here. Hi. Hey. Hi yeah. Um, in the series, Michael, you ask a lot of, well, you explain a lot of complicated stuff and use really big words. And Richard, in a row. Yeah, yeah. Always in a row. Richard, did that ever um, actually go over your head, or were you just that good? <laughs> I got it. Thank you. That is the funniest thing I've ever heard. Don't you know me? <laughs> Richard, Richard actually said something when we were shooting the pilot, which I will never forget to this day. Because I thought, I thought at the time, I said, what the hell is he talking about? <laughs> well, actually, you said a lot of things that I said, what the hell I is know. he talking about, even today. Um, <laughs> but he said, he said, I was reading some swath of expository mumbo jumbo, and I rattled it off in one take and sort of sat there kind of prideful going, yeah, I did that kind of thing. And, and Rick came up and said, well done. Well done. You know you're screwed, right? Uh, I said, what do, you, what do you mean? He goes, you showed them you could do it. It's true. Absolutely. They're going to keep making you do it. He said, I have this little rule. I call it the rule of thumb. Any passage of dialogue that's longer than my thumb on the page, I won't say. So he spent the entire first season, even when he's completely capable of doing it, screwing up any line that was longer than, yeah, right, what? Sure, Daniel, whatever it was. There was they tried to do other stuff before that, and no freaking way. And sure enough, what ended up happening, Amanda and I became these sleep-deprived nimwits because we'd have to go home and learn six pages of expository. And he'd just go home and go. <laughs> and he was absolutely right. Yes, but look at me now. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks very much for the questions. Uh, before we wrap it up real quick, what, uh, what can people see both of you in coming up? Um, uh, my hotel room <laughs> pretty soon. Or in the lobby, I should say. Are you, are you asking if I'm working? I don't know. Have I ever worked? <laughs> he's he's been with me when I've attempted to work. Um, You've made a lot of money over the years not working, though. That's I have sort to of say. why I don't work right now. <laughs> no, I'm doing a lot of well, I don't know what do you call it's it charity stuff. Yes, yeah, I guess <laughs> philanthropic sort of uh, anything, anything you'd like to direct these people to help support. Sea Shepherd Conservation Society, please. Um, Google it. You, you, most of you are familiar with it, but uh, we've got a still chasing the Japanese out of uh, whaling um, industry out of the uh, South or the Antarctica, Antarct the Australian Arctic Reserve, where they've been uh, uh, raping and pillaging the whales down there and killing them unnecessarily. 
And this year we were fairly successful. We, uh, they had to abandon the ship because it ran out of gas because we were chasing it. Or, but anyway, that's been our goal is to get to uh, kind of uh, bring a halt to the, uh, the uh, whaling industry. So we're, we're working on that. That's good. <laughs> All right, everybody. Once more, let's give a... Wait a minute. What's Michael doing? I don't know what to say after that. <laughs> Gordy House Story, 8 o'clock tomorrow night on CBC. Hey. Hey. All right, ladies and gentlemen, big round of applause. Michael Shanks, Richard Dean Anderson. Thank you.